Hello everyone, Rich here, back for another video for the Diecast F1 review. Focus of today is the Williams Renault FW16 for the 1994 F1 season, driven by Ayrton Senna and part of the Ayrton Senna model racing car collection, and in 118 as well. Hmm. Didn't notice that, the, label, the price tag hasn't come off properly, never mind. Yes, part of the Ayrton Senna collection, the 1994 Williams. Just focus on the box first. Of course, very, very, very iconic box. Whenever you see one of these on eBay, you're going to know there's not going to be a cheaper model inside. And they usually sell for quite a lot of money as well, especially the uh, McLarens. But uh, the Williams is also quite popular as well. So it's made by Mini Champs. And also very nice colouring as well because of the Brazilian flag being bright, all bright colours. Senna's helmet as well. And also all the Mini Champs, poor models, art guff on the back. Uh, and also the label on the side Williams Renault FW16 A Center. So that's pretty much it for the box. Let me just go inside the box now. Uh, and I will do a jump cut to unscrew the model on the inside. But hey ho, here we go. A very nice model inside. This is the standard version as well because the, there was a, a, a special edition version where they released this model with all the Rothmans decals on. But uh, mine doesn't have that, and I'm a bit too far zoomed out as well. There we go. All right, but anyway, onto the car itself in its uh, reality form from the '94 season as well. Uh, coming back from uh, two years of absolute domination, the '94 season started off with rule changes, focusing on the ban of active suspension, uh, ABS, and all other fancy uh, technology that was used at the time. There was a, there was a version of the Williams that were going to be racing with a I think the CVT gearbox, I can't remember what all those letters stand for, it's sort of uh, something to do with tra variable transmission. Basically the driver, all the, all the driver had to do was point uh, point the car in the right direction and pretty much accelerate and brake. No gears required. And of course that was all banned and in 94 Williams came up with this car uh, with passive suspension and of course it didn't work for the uh, first time. It was a bit off the pace and of course Benetton got the upper hand on them. Whether the Benetton was legal at the time is up to uh, various in interpretations of well anyone's opinion. Basically, I, I'm not I'm not one to judge. Uh, but anyway, history is history. Of course, the car was although fast in qualifying, it didn't match the Benetton in race pace. Senna led the first race up to the first round of pit stops, or it could have been the second round of pit stops. But anyway, Benetton got the jump on him, and Senna just couldn't keep up. Ended up just spinning off. Uh, Damon Hill uh, in the other car finished second, although a lap down. Um, and then into the second race in Aida, Japan. Senna was on pole again, but was nerfed off at the first corner by uh, Mika Hakkinen. And then Damon Hill retired during the race as well with a gearbox problem, I think. And then up to Imola, of course everyone knows what happened there. Uh, the car was modified and uh, various parts added. I won't get into the uh, business of what caused the accident. I have my own opinions, but I'm not going to bother with it. It just caused more arguments, and uh, I'm not into that. Um, but anyway, Senna, of course, crashed and was killed. And various rule changes came in throughout the year. Now, we'll get onto them on this model. Um, well, that's not really on this model, because uh, this is pre Imola 94. Um, but I I'll do a jump cut while I unscrew the car from the base, so I shall return in just a moment. Hello, back again. Uh, back after an extended jump cut because I couldn't find the right size screwdriver. Yes, Mini Champs have a, a renowned for releasing models which are very good quality but are very inconsistent with the, mo the uh, type of screws they use. I, these are very, very small. And I had a very big screwdriver which didn't help. So I had to go find another one. But anyway, onto the uh, model itself. Uh, of course, throughout the 94 season, this car eventually did change. After the events of Imola, there were massive rule changes, but I'll get onto them later on because there were various versions after the Senna model, especially with Manson and Coulthard, that I'll get onto later on. Anyway, onto the model itself. I do have an issue with mine. Steering seems stuck in one position, uh, sort of turned slightly to the left, or to the right, sorry, and it's, it won't unspring. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Very nice model. I wasn't a huge fan of the Rothmans livery on this shape of car because, in my opinion, this car should have stayed with the uh, camel and cannon logos on the car, the uh, blue, yellow, and white livery. But uh, of course, things move on and money pays for the sponsors, or money pays 
sponsors pay money for everything. Of course, I suppose Canon wanted to pull out as well as Camel and all that. But anyway, onto the model itself. I was much more preferred the delivery on the uh, the 17, 18, and 19 cars, but uh, it looks good enough on the 16. But the steering is really annoying me. Quality-wise, this model is top-notch, apart from the steering. Very well made. It's very heavy as well, although it's sort of about the same as any other Mini Chaps model. Held together quite nicely as well. The wing mirrors are quite sturdy as well. They tend to be the first things that break on any model. Uh, got the rear wing as well. Same flex as normal. And also we've got uh, covers on top of the suspension. I think these were... There was a lot of debate about these, whether these were movable aerodynamic devices because they went up and down with the suspension. But I suppose they were made legal after a while. And of course we've got the center figure in the car as well. And I did say at the beginning that there was another version of this car. Uh, Mini Chats released a special edition with all the Rothmans uh, logos on. I would go ahead and modify this model and put the Rothmans logos on, but I really don't want to cock up a very expensive model, so it's going to stay as it is. It's not as though anyone sees this model either, because it's in a, in a closed box as well, so I have to get a dustproof cabinet to put it in. But, uh, it's, a, it's an absolutely stunning, stunning uh, example of the car and not really much else to say about it. There, was, there is a, a big gripe with this one because the centre figure in the car, the top half of them should be white, but it's all blue, and that's why Mini Champs have sort of dropped a bollock on this one because it really should be white on the top and then blue bottom half. But uh, can't complain really. I can't get it out. I can't really do much about it. But uh, never mind. The later models in the line, the uh, Coulthard in Mansell version. The Coulthard version, I think, had the driver in as well as the Damon Hill version as well, but uh, the Mansell version, which is basically this car but with a red number 2 on it, uh, didn't have any changes made to it at all. When Mansell joined the team in, I think it was the French Grand Prix that year, a lot of rule changes had been made, i.e. the front wing had been made, uh, made smaller, rear wing also, and also a hole cut in the top of the engine cover, as well as some other changes later on in the season. But Mini Champs didn't add those changes, they basically just used the same mould and just changed a few decals, which I thought was a bit of a cheek really, because you're paying for a Mansell model, but basically just getting the center car with a few different bits on it, well, with a few decals on it, there's no changes to the design, and it's a real shame, that any chance really should have uh, looked into that one. But uh, overall, an absolute stunning model. You pay around, depends where you look though, I suppose if you go on eBay, you're going to pay about 60, 70 pounds for this one. I paid 45, 46 pounds for this one back in 2007 and that was a lot of money I thought back then. But of course models, Mini Chats models especially, have gone up in, in price huge amounts. I mean I think the latest line, uh, which will be of course 2014 models coming out now, are around 120 pounds uh, at uh, RRP, which is ridiculous. Considering 10 years ago you're paying 40 pounds for the cars and it's just, you know, it's really how good the price on a, on your hobby go up so much? And I suppose it's the same with model railways as well. The price just escalates. That's enough about me rambling. Back onto the car. Of course, in the Rothmans livery, very nice as well. Just have a quick look around. Get the nose view of the car. Very nice there. Of course, you've got the old. I think it's Sega Frado, Sega Fredo logo on the side there. <laughs> now back on the McLaren in 2015. Kind of looks out of date. But uh, no worries. Got the nice engine cover there. And a bit of detail in the cockpit. Got the uh, the button on the steering wheel. Not a huge amount of detail in there actually. Get a decent look in there. Yeah, not a huge amount of detail. Got a, a dial in there as well. But the plastic uh, windscreen is a bit thick, so you can't really see it very well. Also get a reflection in the in the mirror as well. And yeah, also have a look at the diffuser underneath. Let's have a look at the underneath actually, because these are still the flat bottom cars as well of the uh, era and uh, here we go, got a bit of dust on the screen doesn't help and here we go, got the Ayrton Senna racing car collection on the bottom also made in China and also Williams FW16 Renner and also the exhaust pipes, diffusers and all things like that usual screw holes and then the detail underneath where the suspension attaches as well they made the uh, middle part blue to match the rest of the bodywork, I think that should have gone into the bodywork. Um, 
yeah, not too bad. It's a bit the tires are a bit dusty because I did have this in the uh, cabinet for a few months, but uh, that's about eight nine years ago, so or seven eight years. And the other tires are a bit dusty, but apart from that, it's fine. Very nice. Be a nice addition to any collection, really, especially if you're a Senna fan. Um, this is why the price keeps going up as well, because this is very sought after models, not in production anymore. And uh, I don't know why the face recognition is uh, focusing on the rear wing, on the front wing, but uh, hey ho, never mind. So yeah, this is the uh, of course there's lines out of production for a few years now. I think Mini Champs announced they're going to be rehashing some of the models uh, or re-releasing them rather. Um, I don't know if they still have the rights to it. I think, um, who else was that? I think there's another company. I can't remember if it was Spark or someone else are going to be releasing models as well in the Senna collection or, or of Senna's cars as well, but have more detail like removable body panels and things like that. I'm not sure if that's uh, in the go as well. And I think they're going to be resin as well, whereas this is die cast metal. Um, but yeah, there's a, uh, I don't think the Williams are going to be part of the collection. Um... I think Spark have the the, the uh, Williams uh, the Williams rights. I must get hold of a Williams as well. A Spark Williams. Um, yeah. Um, a few issues with the quality. I've said the driver. Uh, I've said the steering as well because I'm stuck in the constant turning right. Maybe it means something. I don't know. Um, also, the rear tyres are a bit stiff as well, so it doesn't doesn't roll very well. It doesn't roll at all actually. But never mind. It also picks up the dust, which is annoying. But uh, yeah, overall it's a very, very, very nice model as well. Got the usual Coke bottle shape. Also the large side pods as well. V-shaped rear wing. I really shouldn't pick it up like that, but I can't help it. And front suspension feels a bit loose, I think. Um, but yeah, overall it's a very, very nice model to get hold of. If you can, they turn up on eBay quite consi uh, quite uh, regularly. I say consistently. They're quite pop well, quite uh, regular on eBay. If you're going to get hold of one, though, you've got to pay a lot of money for it. There are a lot of people as well who buy the s uh, standard version of this one and then just put uh, um, Rothman's logos on the side there, using their own decals, usually bumping up the price in the process. But uh, you know, who can blame them really? If you're going to get a top dollar out of a model, you're going to want it to look pristine as well. Um, yeah, detail wise, there's just zoom in on the. Uh, of course, you've got the uh, very small decal there, the Senna Renault there. Very nicely detailed helmet as well. Down the side, the A Senna, down the nose. Big, big join gap in the uh, in the side of the bodywork there, or side of the monocoque, where the uh, plastic joins to the to the metal. Bit of dust there, didn't notice that. And yes, yeah, it's uh, very nicely detailed as well. It needs a good clean actually. You, can, you never notice the, how much dust there is. <laughs> well, anyway, nice detail there. I also like the wheels on these cars as well. The, uh, the star shape wheel rims. Don't see these in Formula One anymore. I think Sauber were the last ones to use these uh, type of wheel rims. Or just notice not a lot of detail on the brake disc. Got the brake caliper, but. Uh, no discs, well, no detail on the discs, but not to worry. But like I say, a very nice model. And if you can get a hold of one, you'll be prepared to pay a lot of money for it. Uh, probably about 60 70 pounds, depending on the uh, Rothmans liveries as well. They tend to fetch about 100 150 pounds, but not to worry. If you can live without it, we can, we can live with uh, parting with 150 pounds for a single car, then by all means do so. I won't. Um, and uh, I will be reviewing more Senna models as well. I do have another two of the Senna collection as well. Um, I do have other Senna cars or Senna, cars Senna drove, but they're just not got Senna in them. Like the uh, the Lotus 98T, which Senna drove. I have the uh, Johnny Dumfries version, and I'll do a review a review of that one later on as well. Um, yeah, I will guarantee a top quality model, despite its flaws and driver wrong paint. Um, but yeah, I will recommend getting hold of this model. Even if you're just a Formula One fan, any any collection should have this car in, and I'll turn it that way. Again, but yeah, um, by all means, get hold of one, and I'll give this one about of a, an eight out of ten, seven and a half to eight out of ten, just because of the uh, shortfalls of it. But uh, I really should have got hold of the Rothmans version, but uh, never mind. 
But anyway, this is Rich signing off, logging off, disappearing, and I shall return with another review in the future. So, bye for now.